Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a beating heart in Cinema 4D. So I've been working on a few medical animations lately, and there's a few tutorials out there already showing you how to do something similar to this, but I think I've figured out the quickest and easiest way to do this beating heart effect. And I'll show you right now. First, you want to start with a nice heart model. We've got this guy, but you could use pretty much anything you wanted to. I think any organic shape would work pretty well. Then let me quickly show you our scene setup so you can follow along. If we go up to render settings here, we've got 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames a second as usual. And if we close this and hit Control D, you can see our project settings frame rate is 24 frames a second as well. Okay, let's make this heart start beating. To do that, we're gonna come up here to our deformers and we're gonna grab a bulge deformer. If you hold shift while you click this, it should become a child of our heart and instantly apply itself. Nothing's happened yet, but if we come down to the object tab here in our bulge and play with this strength, you can see our heart is bulging now. We don't really want the whole thing to bulge. We just wanna limit the effect to certain areas of our model. And to do that, we just need to come over to the fall off tab and we'll change the shape from infinite to sphere. And if we go and drag this out, you can see our spherical fall off. Anything in the yellow sphere will be affected 100%, falling off to 0%, anything outside the red sphere. So all we have to do is reposition this. Let's bring in a camera so we can come back to this view. That turns it on, that turns it off. Let's move this over here so it's inside of our heart and spin around there and get it into place. Let's try something like that. And if we go back to our object tab and play with that strength, it's confined to just that area, which I believe in the case of a heart is called a ventricle. We don't want to go too crazy on our bulge. Let's just bring it back to something like 20% for now. And I might just swing it around here and tweak it a bit so it matches the shape of our heart a little bit better. Okay, I think that angle's looking a bit better. Let's just test that. All right, cool, back to 20% for now. If you want the effect to fall off a little bit smoother, you can always come and grab these points and drag them out. And maybe we'll shift this over just a little bit more. Something like that should be fine. Now, if we go back to our camera angle, let's start adding keyframes. Let's go to frame 11, then back at our bulge, We'll set a keyframe at 20 in the strength. Then back to frame six, let's put that back to zero and set another keyframe. Then we'll scooch forward to frame 15, zero again, and keyframe. Let's just set our timeline to 35 frames so we can play this back and watch it loop. Let's go back to the start and play. And there you go. Not the most realistic looking beating heart, but our next step is gonna make this look a lot more organic. Let's go back up and click on our heart. And then this time from the deformers menu, we wanna grab our old friend Jiggle. Don't forget to hold shift again so it's automatically applied. I've been using this guy a lot lately, it's pretty cool. But for this to work correctly, we've gotta make sure we've got these in the right order. Let's bring Jiggle under the bulge so it's applied after the bulge happens. Then if we come down, hit play. That's looking kinda of creepy, but it's a lot more realistic. And we can probably tweak some of these settings to get it looking even better. So pause that, go back to the start, and back at our jiggle, let's bring that stiffness way up to 100, and we could probably bring that structural down just a tad to 94%, and we'll give that a go. Now that's looking more realistic. We could probably come up to filter, and we'll just turn off our deformers, so we can see this a bit better, if we click off everything. And I think that's looking very cool, and it was so easy to set up. Let's pause it again, and we'll add a few more little details. Let's go back up to filter and we'll turn those deformers back on. We're gonna go over here and duplicate that bulge. You can do that by holding control and dragging it up here. Then we can come back over here and grab it and we'll just reposition it. Maybe we want something happening over here to the left. We'll change that fall off. Bring that in here so it's just affecting that area. Then we'll go down to frame 11 where we've got that keyframe. And at the moment it's set to 20%, which is bulging outward. This time to make it a bit more interesting, we're gonna make it bulge inward. So let's put in negative 15% and update that keyframe. Then we'll just switch off our first bulge so we can see our new effect a bit clearer. Something like that. Let's just stop that. I wanna see these working together. 
Let's grab these keyframes. You can hold shift and drag across here to select them all. And we'll just put them back to the start. So we'll have our bulge in and then we'll have our bulge out. So we'll switch him back on and back over at our filters. We'll turn off those deformers so we can see this a bit easier. Let's deselect everything and hit play. And that's looking kind of cool to me. We could even adjust this a bit further, maybe change some of the springiness of it. We'll pause that and we come back to our jiggle. Down here under the advanced tab, if we bring the springs up to six maybe, we'll give that a try. Okay, I'm liking that. I think we're almost done with our beating heart. Instead of a bulge, you could actually use a different deformer. If we come up here, you could always try a spherify instead. So back under our deformers menu, we'll grab this guy. If we bring that in, then drag him into our hierarchy here and turn the bulges off, I'll show you what this looks like. If we come down here and tweak some of this, you will notice that nothing's gonna happen. We just have to come back up here and turn that jiggle off so we can see this. And that's affecting it way too much. Let's bring that strength down. And you can see by animating this, you can get a different style of bulge where it kind of bulges out in every direction. And if we go and put in some keyframes, just keying this the same way as we did before, we can get that sort of effect. So play around with this technique. I'm sure you can come up with some interesting looks. Let's just get rid of that spherify and put our bulges back on. I'll quickly show you how you can loop this animation. We want these 35 frames to loop. So we want to make sure we've got a keyframe at the beginning and end of each section. So on this one, we'll go to frame 35 and set a keyframe where it's at. Then we'll grab the other one and same deal. Frame 35, keyframe there. This one will need one at the beginning as well. Just keyframe that one at zero. Now we'll grab both of those and right click and we'll come down to show F curves. We'll hover over here and press Control A to select all these keyframes. And then up here under Functions, Track After, and we'll grab Repeat After. And if we grab this thing and zoom out a little bit, you'll see that that's repeated just the once, which is a bit of a pain because it used to repeat infinitely. But in the newer versions of Cinema 4D, we've got a bit more control over this. All we have to do is grab both of these, and down here in the attributes menu, we can control the exact amount of repetitions. Let's just set that to something crazy like 999 for now. And if we zoom out, you can see that repeating now. Cool. Let's close that and we'll come down to our timeline. Let's add a few frames in here. And we'll stretch this out and hit play. And there you go, our looping heartbeat. When you're happy with your animation, you might want to cache this before you render it. I'll show you how to do that. If we stop this and we'll bring this back down to 200 frames. Let's scooch over to our heart, grab that guy. And under tags, we'll come down to character tags and we want to grab the point cache. So we'll just click on store state to get this going and hit calculate. And that'll run through all the frames and bake those for us. And once that's all done, if you come down and hit play, you'll notice it's a little bit different than before. It looks extra jiggly. And that's because it's just reapplying all these effects to our cached mesh. If we turn those off, it should be sweet. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project files below to save a bit of time. And you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.